A lot of new makeup has launched recently and as always, I have opinions, so let's do an all new purchase or pass. To begin, let the record show that I am wearing something other than a matte brown eyeshadow today. I'm technically wearing a green, but I don't know that it's translating as green. I'm wearing the shade Hollywood from the Sigma Angela Bright palette. A little bit different today, just a little. Okay, I've been having so much fun categorizing my purchaser pass videos into different segments. So today I would like to kick things off with a segment that I'm calling gimmicks galore. Okay, I was reading an article from Business of Fashion recently that I can leave linked down below, but they were talking about the boom of stunt beauty. And they basically describe this as makeup brands leaning into gimmicks. And one specific example they used in the video was the Satchu peel off lip liner, you know, we've talked about that a lot on my channel, but this is something I've observed pretty heavily in the beauty space recently, including some launches we're going to talk about today. A lot of brands are utilizing the shock factor there, you know, and the first example that I want to use, I'm going to scoot over actually, but this first example is the new cloud glow primer from milk makeup. Okay. Because milk makeup in particular is definitely on the gimmick train right now. I really felt this with their jelly blushes. As you know, I hated those. I didn't find the formulation to be that great, but they were very unique in the sense that we had not really seen something with that jelly texture. So naturally everybody was talking about them. It was a very gimmicky product that looked fun and jiggly in videos. And then just the hype around how unique they were almost kind of surpassed the quality of them in my opinion. Like the formula wasn't that great, but it was unique and therefore got a lot of buzz and therefore was sold out. And I feel like this is the new direction Milk is going. We're seeing them kind of lean into the gimmicky vibes. So this Cloud Glow Primer is like a foaming liquid product that you pump out and it looks like you have a face wash or a hand soap, but it's actually a primer. So here's what I'm envisioning happening here when this like fully kicks off and launches. I'm envisioning our feeds are gonna be flooded with a million people just like pumping this foam onto your face. And from the creator's perspective, I totally get why so many people are going to create a video with this because for the viewer, you're scrolling, that's gonna stop your scroll. You're like, oh, what is? what are they pumping on their face? So the creator is gonna get good views, Milk Makeup is gonna get a lot of buzz about this product, but from like a logistical standpoint, I just don't really understand this product. My very first thought was, what's that gonna do to my sunscreen, you know, because in my, my face order first I'm doing my sunscreen and then I'm doing my makeup over top so to apply this liquid on top of my sunscreen has me a little bit concerned is it going to disrupt it is it going to affect the performance of my sunscreen am I still going to get the protection beyond that I'm also skeptical that this product would help me achieve a very different look than other textures would and maybe I'm wrong maybe it's going to be the best primer in the world we will see but it's feeling a little gimmicky to me just like this from the brand Sunday. So this is a UK exclusive launch. So unfortunately I won't be able to get my hands on this, but this is their whipped shower foam. And this kind of reminds me a bit of the concept of the primer from Milk, but also from the sunscreen from the brand Vacation. They have that whipped cream sunscreen. You pump it out, it looks like food, and then you rub it onto your face. So. I've watched the same type of videos where someone just like, you know, they, they get you in the first two seconds of the video because you see them pumping what appears to be whipped cream onto their face. And you're like, wait, what, what are they doing? And you stop to scroll, you watch the video. That's what's going to happen with this gimmicks. Um, also, you know, we've got a lot of collabs. I think that's kind of adjacent to gimmicks when we're talking about IP and nostalgia based collabs. I did an entire video about this in my makeup musing series about the rise in nostalgia themed collaborations. And the newest is ColourPop and Pokemon. I actually used to love Pokemon growing up, so I thought this was really cute. At the time that I'm filming this, we have almost zero details about the collab, but that is coming. Also, Maybelline collaborating with Takis for like a spicy lip gloss. I don't purchase for Maybelline because they're not cruelty free, but I don't know, some of these collabs, like if you would have told me five years ago we would be seeing makeup brands collaborate with food, with retailers, with like, like American Eagle or like Crocs, I would have been like, what? But now nothing surprises me. I genuinely don't think I could find a collab that would shock me. I'm like, yeah, 
It's about time. Now this next one's not really a gimmick, but it doesn't fit in any other category, so I'm gonna talk about it now because it's kind of gimmicky, but also not at all. But the newest hair dryer from Dyson, okay? So this is their new supersonic hair dryer. And this hair dryer's claim to fame is the scalp and the way that it's designed to reduce harm for your scalp. Okay, so let me read to you. The new device is smaller with a new scalp mode, which automatically reduces heat as the device moves closer to your hair to protect the scalp. That's, that's, I don't, I don't know how they did that, but okay. Very, 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 very interesting here. And I think Dyson is a really interesting player in the beauty realm, but specifically in hair care because Yes, they come out with insanely expensive products, but they are incredibly innovative in this segment. And we've seen a lot of brands really like trying to catch up with Dyson and making their, their version of the air wrap. And Dyson, whether it's like with vacuums or with hair dryers, they do always bring something new to the table. So I'm really intrigued by this brand. But what I cannot wrap my head around is the price of this hair dryer. It's $500, which that was like the original price of the air wrap, which is a separate blow dryer from this. That's the one that has the attachments that curl your hair. This is a regular blow dryer that has some additional attachments. When they first launched the Supersonic, it retailed for $400. And don't get me wrong, they have improved it, as I just told you, but it is just wild to think about the price of hair dryers and I think just any products in general. But it blows my mind to think that probably in my lifetime, a $1,000 hair dryer is going to exist. Like, this went up from $400 to $500 in just a couple of years. Like, they're, like it's not long until we're there. It's just mind-blowing to think that but the timing of this launch makes a lot of sense in my opinion because we've seen a big emphasis in scalp care specifically when it comes to hair related launches i feel like we've seen this a lot in shampoos in any product they're really focusing on the scalp whereas for years we've really been talking about like the lengths of the hair so now to be prioritizing that different section of hair makes a lot of sense but let me know your thoughts. Will you be buying this $500 hair dryer? Before we hop into the next segment, let's briefly talk sales because big news, if you have not heard yet, Ulta listened to us. So Ulta Beauty changed the 21 days of beauty sale this year. They did it entirely different than they normally do. Typically, it lasts for 21 days and they share the entire sale calendar in advance so you can kind of decide, what do I wanna get on each day? But this year, they changed the name, they added a bunch of new products, and they were giving us the sale week by week. So you had to wait to see what you were gonna have available on sale. People did not like this at all. And apparently Ulta listened because they have now announced the remainder of the sale calendar. I can leave a link down below if you wanna access it. That is an affiliate link. I do use affiliate links in my description box, so thank you so much if you choose to shop through them. But we've got the oldest sale going on now, which means next up is the Sephora sale. You know, it's always like spring and fall. We got these back-to-back -back sales, but the Sephora VIB sale is coming up too. Don't worry, I'll be doing a full video about it as I always do. We're talking the same discounts though. It's the 10, the 15, the 20%, depending on your tier, you know, it's not a great sale for being honest in terms of like actual savings there but if there were things you have been wanting i always feel like it's pretty smart to kind of save that shopping for when the sale is going on so it will be starting on april 5th for rouge and then april 9th for everyone else stay tuned i will be doing a video moving into our next segment i have named this copy and paste makeup because that's how i would describe almost everything that has launched mm in like the last year. Everything looks like something else. And I use this description to speak beyond just dupes because you know, dupes are one thing. They're a little bit more specific. In my eyes, this copy and paste makeup is like giving the same vibes, even if it's not necessarily intended to be a dupe. It's like everything seems like the same thing these days. And I think the brand that visualizes this the best is Polite Society. So this is the new brand that was created by the founders of Too Faced. You know, we've had a lot of 
um, like original brand founders now going on to create new brands. This is the newest. And all of these launches in my eyes are just like, I'm like, yep, predictable. These are all the products that have been super popular. We've got the blush sticks in all the same shades we've seen blush sticks in before. We've got the squeezy tube lip balms in all the same shades we've seen squeezy tube lip balms in before. We have this egg foundation which was interesting to me packaging tell me why i like this i don't i feel like i'm not supposed to like this but i think it's weird and cute and i feel like if it was in my drawer my eyes would be drawn to it but i can't say i'm surprised by these launches from polite society because it's kind of what i was expecting but knowing the resources available like i said this is from the original founders of Too Faced, so i'm just kind of like mm kind of wanted something different i'm just getting bored it's all a little stale you know that's also how i feel about this this teaser from hailey bieber or was i gonna say hailey beauty <laughs> from hailey bieber um it seems as if road will be bringing us probably a blush that's what it looked like from this little teaser and i'm just like yep yeah, that's what i expected i i i do my makeup predictions every year in december and a lot of my predictions have come true already this year, but it's almost gotten to a point where these are so predictable. It's like, yeah, of course she was gonna come out with a blush stick. Everyone's coming out with a blush stick this year. Same with this, okay? I can't take it anymore. The click up lip pens, I'm like, all right, that's enough. If you haven't gotten your dupe of this out yet, mm, it's too late, scrap it, we don't care anymore. I mean, maybe that's just me, but I've already bought, okay. You know, we have the originals, we got the Tarte and we've got the Hourglass. I think most of these brands are more so trying to dupe Tarte, but Hourglass has an almost identical style of product. So we've got those. I just bought the NYX one. I already had the Flower Beauty one. I've been trying to get my hands on the e.l.f. one, but it's only on their website, I believe. Now ColourPop has one too, and I'm like, any other brands? If you're like working on this behind the scenes, just scrap it. It's too late. We've got enough. To be honest, that's how I feel about this too. The bronzing drops. I mentioned this in my predictions video. I'm like, that's what people are gonna be trying to dupe this year. I didn't even realize the extent of it. And it's just starting. Like, you know, there are, there, there are more coming. So this brand is Naked Sundays. It's an Australian brand and they're now at Target. It's not just them doing this type of product. I just use this as an example. I just got the Glow Recipe one. Shockingly, I love this. I will insert the side-by-side -side video that I posted doing it compared to their original formula that doesn't have the glow. These are called the Hue Drops. If you recall, I have always hated the Drunk Elephant Debronzy Drops. The first time I used them on camera, someone said to me, you look like you aged 10 years by applying that product. And mm, I kind of understood, I, un I understood it. I didn't, I didn't like reading it, but I understood it because it just left my face looking very splotchy and uneven. And that was what I would always run into with the Drunk Elephant ones. Regardless of mixing them or not, it just made my face look a little dirty. Maybe I'm just too pale for them. I could see them working for other people depending on their skin tone, but I just did not get along well with those. So I anticipated these two give me a similar look, but I actually like this better. It's much less pigmented than the Drunk Elephant. So if you, the Drunk Elephant is your holy grail, I actually don't think you'll like those ones but if you found the drunk elephant to be a little patchy and hard to blend and a little dry those are better but everyone is doing these now and i think the next one is going to be elf between the time that i'm filming this video and editing it and getting it up i feel like they're going to announce it but they just posted this sneak peek right here of a burn away cake have you been seeing these burn away cakes it's the weirdest thing you've got this top layer it says something you light it on fire and then the layer beneath it says something else while well, using one of those elf teased that something is coming and then the top comment says bronzing drops with a little like eye emoji and elf responded with something glowy is coming your way so the dupes continue it's really been the year of dupes um i both like it and i'm bored of it i don't know let me know where you stand but we're gonna segue into our next category here called straight out of my 2017 time capsule. I know that's quite a name, but that, that's what I came up with for this one because there were a few products that I saw that I was like, what year is it? What year is it? Starting with this from Tarte. If you have just flashed this on the screen too, like, okay, actually, if I were to flash this on the screen for you, I didn't tell you who it is. Pretend I didn't just say Tarte. What would you think? Because I would have guessed, I 
probably would have bet money that this was a steal a palette out of 2017, actually maybe 2014. But no, it, it's brand new from Tarte. It's called the, you could probably guess, Shape Tape Glow Blush Bar. I am honestly impressed by the way that Tarte has been able to like manipulate the name Shape Tape into so many products that you would think they can't put Shape Tape into this. It wouldn't make sense, but somehow they do. That's how I feel about this. I'm like, what's what's the Shape Tape anymore? Like we've even lost the plot with the, with the phrase Shape Tape. What does it even mean anymore? Because originally it was the concealer. And that was when we were at the height of contour highlight like morphing our faces so it kind of made sense to use that name shape tape because it implied that we were kind of like doing some contouring and i guess like you could make that argument here like you know you've got a bronzer you've got a blush it's gonna be i don't know let me know if i'm missing something but i'm like i'm confused it's like you know when you say a word over and over and over like if you were to just pick a word and say it a hundred times in a row it doesn't sound like a word anymore that's where i'm at with shape tape i'm like what does that mean what was what did that even originally mean but anyways our next 2017 inspired launch is this palette from Too Faced, or these these so these are minis these are called the born this way mini eyeshadow palettes again it's like Tarte has Shape Tape, Too Faced has Born This Way. We finally got Urban Decay to retire naked. Like, let's get these brands on board as well. But anyways, so these, if, this is another one. If you would have just shown me this, maybe not with the cover of the palette. The cover is what tells me it's Too Faced. But if I were to just see the inside of this, I would guess, and again, I would bet money that this was like a department store luxury brand from 2017. You know, you know how we would see this so often, like you kind of got the neutral palette, but with somewhat of a pop, but it's not too much of a pop. You know, it's that like emerald green that's not really that emerald or like that purple that's not really that purple. While we're talking about Too Faced and flashbacks to like 2017, actually this was before then, I believe, but uh, they're now bringing us the Chocolate Soleil stick. So we've got a, a stick version of this. Do you remember when that was like, that was that girl, the Chocolate Soleil bronzers? I was obsessed with Milk Chocolate Soleil. It's interesting to me that this product has kind of like died off in popularity. I know it's probably just because it's older, but I feel like from what I remember, this was a great formula. And you know, maybe I'd have to try it again today to see how it stacks up, but I could see them doing some sort of campaign to like refresh this, okay? Give us some more shades, get people talking about it again. Like this was a great bronzer. And who knows, maybe the stick bronzers will kind of do that at the same time, almost like re-promote the older powder formula. But while we're discussing bronzers, that's gonna move us into the next segment that I call boring things that I want. And we're gonna kick this off with something that I bought. And I actually don't think these are boring, but I'm kind of kidding because I love boring things. If, if someone were to describe it as boring, I probably like it, at least when it comes to makeup, at least when it comes to makeup. So uh, first of all, these bronzers from NYX, I picked one up. This is called the Buttermelt Bronzer and I'm actually wearing it today. This is my first time applying it. Maybe it's too much, maybe it's too much, but shockingly, I'm not wearing any blush. I'm just wearing this. So they launched these new bronzers. These retail for $10. The packaging, one thing, I hate when packaging does this. I want this to lay flat. Why? I don't know, but I, I do. I feel like I'm gonna break this, I don't know. But this is the bronzer. As you'll notice, these are all very rosy toned bronzers, which has recently been a bigger and bigger trend. And I wasn't sure how I felt about it at first, but I kind of do like it. There's something about this that's almost giving like a very 90s, no blush really, but like you're wearing your bronzer kind of as both. And that's what I did today. It's acting as both. There still is this like warmth and almost rosy quality about it that gives you a blushy effect but I don't know, I like it. And it's so interesting to think that a few years ago on my cheeks, I felt that I needed a blush, a bronzer, and a highlight. And now I feel like a product like this is my blush, bronzer, and highlight. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't describe it as a highlighter quality. It doesn't necessarily have a shimmer to it, but I don't find it to be a flat matte powder. I feel like it gives my cheeks still some life. I don't know, I've used it once and I like it, but obviously I'm gonna get back to you. This is the Urban Decay Face Bond Waterproof Liquid Foundation. 
I I would like to have a word with whoever named this. The face bond? I just can't imagine. I'm just, I'm like, hmm. I want to know what other names they threw out there that they said no to before they decided on face bond. Weird name aside though, I, I want to know how similar this is going to be to the Stay Naked Foundation. If you remember, that was my holy grail. It was such a good formula. And the description of this makes me think it's going to be similar, all right? So they say it is a three-in-one foundation that combines serum, foundation, and setting powder. So it's supposed to be a more mattified finish. It has 3% niacinamide. Okay, niacinamide is like the current hyaluronic acid. Every brand is like, did you know we put niacinamide in this? With niacinamide, we added niacinamide, but it has niacinamide. It's supposed to absorb sweat and oil, last for 24 hours, and be waterproof. I'm envisioning, or maybe I'm hoping, that this will be similar to Fenty Eavesdrop, where it's that very liquidy formula, but it is high pigment while being matte. Eavesdrop is not super full coverage, but it is a nice medium level, which personally I love. So I will, I'm curious about this. I'm really thinking it's gonna be similar to Stay Naked. I I miss Stay Naked. I was devastated when they got rid of it. Um, I predicted this, thank you so much. I specifically said in 2024, we will be getting Makeup by Mario Master Mattes too, and here it is. It's a cool toned palette. I, I really like this, and I don't know why I want this because I really don't love cool tones on myself. Yes, I do, I do when I don't, but like, I don't even wear eyeshadow anymore. You know, I had to make an announcement that I was wearing eyeshadow today because it's that rare. Why would I buy another palette? I don't know, but is this not beautiful? Is this not beautiful? I also have my eye on this from Say. So this is their new slip tint concealer. So if you remember, I hated Hydra Beam. I found that formula to sit just not cute on my under eyes. It was separating, it was emphasizing. Anything I didn't want emphasized, it was not my friend. So in theory, that you would think that would make me not wanna try their new concealer, but actually it makes me more intrigued by this one because I'm like, well, I didn't like that one. Is this one gonna be the opposite of it? Okay, and unsurprisingly, it is formulated with what? Niacinamide. They say it's lightweight, non-comedogenic. Finish is supposed to be natural and the coverage is supposed to be medium. That's what I like from a concealer. I could do medium full, but I don't want a light coverage concealer. I don't want an extreme coverage concealer. My sweet spot is normally a high medium where I only have to do like one to two dots and then I can really separate it and smooth it out. <gasps> you know what I'm wearing today? You know what I'm wearing today? The Too Faced, no, oh my gosh, Kelly. The Urban Decay Quickie Concealer. I just picked this up. It was in the Ulta, oh, I was gonna say the 21 Days of Beauty. It was in the Ulta Semi Spring, whatever they're calling it now, sale. I got this for half off. I picked up the shade 30NN because that's what I've worn in all their foundations in Hydromaniac and in um, Stay Naked. Maybe that's what I wore in All Nighter. Do you remember All Nighter? Um, so I wore this for the first time today. This isn't my best shade. Part of me is like, dang, I could have gone for 30NN, but I didn't want that to be too light. But this one is slightly too dark for me. But it was very liquidy serum-y. I like it. I feel like my under eyes look nice. I don't know. If you have thoughts, let me know. Who... Who was going to warn me that this is the largest concealer in the world? I just, for reference, this isn't next to a foundation. It's basically a foundation. Let me grab a concealer. Okay, the Kosas. I feel like this is a good reference point. A lot of people have this. Wait, this is almost comical. This is so big. 0.55 fluid ounces. Okay, that's a lot of product. And it has this brush I didn't use. Okay, anyways, enough about this. Back to back to say, I want to like this. I want to like this because I didn't like Hydra Beam. Oh, actually, I don't need this. I'm probably not gonna pick this up, but have you heard? Elf is expanding their primer infused blush and bronzer line. These were all the rage a few years ago. I've never tried the blushes from here, but I loved my Prime Infused Bronzer. I was kind of surprised to see that they relaunched this because I feel like people aren't as excited about powder, blushes, and bronzers at the moment. And when I say people, I don't mean myself because I am. But I was pleasantly surprised to see this, especially to see that some of the new blush shades are like beige nude peach shades. But I feel like to bring back new shades, I wanted more. I wanted more, especially for the bronzer. Like, I don't know. 
actually especially for both they could have gone both directions lighter and deeper also with the blushes i feel like elf could be bringing us some really cool things like a bright orange but these retail for seven dollars they used to be six i believe that was before elf bumped everything up one dollar but seven dollars actually still pretty good compared to other drugstore blushes and bronzers but let me know your thoughts on everything that we talked about today thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next one bye